All right, now we're going to talk about our main scripture passage for the day, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3, and then 11b through 32. All right. Jesus said, Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. Younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up, go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, put his arms around him, kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, best one. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, his older, elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he began, he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Dear God, we pray for insight and inspiration into the reading of your word. It's a parable that we have heard many times over throughout our lives, but God, help us to see if there's anything new that we might discover in your word. Let your spirit be upon us to grant us insight, to grant us the, the reflection and the guidance of your Holy Spirit so that we might learn more about your ways and how we fit into your plans. Help us to be faithful disciples of you through Jesus Christ. Amen. You've heard the scriptures. Now let us tell you the story by acting it out. What story, you ask? Well, why the prodigal son, of course. Or at least that is what the story has been traditionally called. Prodigal. Prodigal means wasteful, reckless, and extravagant. But when Jesus told the story, he was focused on the prodigal father. This parable is really about what the father does in relation to the younger son. 
Ah, but we get ahead of ourselves. The story of the prodigals is set in ancient Israel with its specific reference, but it could be any time. So once upon a time, there was a man who had two sons, or in this case, two daughters. The younger daughter went to her father one day and said, Daddy-o, I'm blowing this joint. Give me the share of the property that belongs to me so I can get out of here. Now, you may think that this was very disrespectful, but in ancient times this would have been the height of disrespect. The younger daughter was essentially asking her father to give her inheritance before her father was dead. You could take it that she was asking her father to die. You remember the fifth commandment to honor your father and mother? Well, they took this very seriously. And in asking for her inheritance in this way, the father could have been within his rights to even kill her for such arrogance. But the father doesn't do that. Strangely enough, the father grants his younger daughter her request and gives her the inheritance she would have received if he was dead. Now, the older daughter cannot understand what is going on here, what her father is doing, and considers her sister to be low life, the lowest of the low. So, a few days later, the older daughter, the younger daughter, takes the money and travels to a distant country. It seems that the younger daughter wanted to get away as far as possible from her home. Meanwhile, the older daughter stayed home and worked, probably glad that she would never see her low-life sister ever again. Now, in that distant country over there, the younger daughter is being very prodigal with her money. She is spending it recklessly and lavishly in dissolute living. She indulges every pleasure in a never-ending party. <clears throat> but the party does come to an end as the younger daughter runs out of money. All her, quote, friends who enjoyed her company when she had money leave her abandoned. Not only did the younger daughter run out of money, uh, but a terrible economic downturn hits the land, the crops fail, and a severe famine strikes throughout the country. The younger daughter is in terrible need, desperate for some kind of work to make money. The younger daughter hires herself out to take care of pigs who are owned by a member of that country. Now, I have to mention here that this part of the story would have shocked a Jewish audience. A Jewish person would never be caught dead being around pigs, let alone tending them. Touching a pig was an abomination, and this would horrify the people listening to Jesus to tell this parable. Jesus was telling them that the younger son, or daughter in this case, was as low as she could go, ethically and morally. Once the prodigal daughter is starving and is so hungry she wants to eat the food that's given to the pigs. And no one had sympathy for her. And no one gave her anything. In her despair, she thought about how she had thrown all her money away in frivolous things. If she had just a fraction of the money, she could just eat and she wouldn't die. She thought about her life at home with her family, where there was plenty to eat. And there was plenty of love from a generous father. She knew that she did not deserve her father's love, but she thought about how her father's hired hands, even they had enough to eat. That was when she came to herself. She realized that how she had hurt other people, most of all her father, the one who had loved her the most, she said to herself, 
I will get up and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your daughter. Treat me as one of your hired hand. So in all humility, she went off to return to her father. And while she was far off, her father saw her coming and seeing the ragged state that she was in and how she walked with a bowed head, he had compassion for her and he ran out to meet her. Now, I have to mention at this time that men don't run. <laughs> running was for youth because running was undignified for an older person to do. Also, you remember the younger daughter, how she treated her father? Treated him in such a way most fathers would have declared their son or daughter to be dead and never be forgiven. But this father runs out to greet his wayward daughter. Father runs out to embrace the prodigal daughter, but she holds up her hands to stop. And she begins to say, Father, I have sinned against you and heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your daughter. But the father embraces her anyway. The father's love is prodigal. The father's forgiveness is prodigal. Extravagant, lavish, prof profuse, long-lasting. <laughs> then the father motions to the servants to come within hearing distance. Yeah, they had an economic downturn too. Yeah. <laughs> He gives them commands to bring out a fine robe for his daughter, a ring for her, her finger, and sandals for her feet. And then he yells out to kill the fatted calf. Kill the fatted calf! And prepare it for a feast. Okay, the father tells the daughter that they are going to celebrate because she was once dead and is now alive. She was lost. But now she's found. They head back to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older daughter is coming in from the field and she hears the music and the dancing going on in the house. The older daughter is confused. She calls for the servants. The older daughter asks the servants, what is all the commotion going on in the house? The servants explain that her younger sister has come home. And they tell the older daughter, your father has killed the fatted calf and is having a party to celebrate your sister's safe return. Upon hearing this, the older daughter flies into a rage. The servants become frightened and run. Run to tell the father of the older daughter's distress. Having been told by the servants, the father comes out of the house and sees his older daughter fuming. He tries to reason with her, pleads for her to come into the house and join the party. The older daughter gathers herself and retorts, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this daughter of yours comes back, the daughter who devoured your property with gigolos, you kill the fatted calf for her. The older daughter is beside herself again, and the father pleads with her to be compassionate and forgiving toward her wayward sister. The father says to her, Daughter, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. Your sister was dead, and now she is alive. She was lost, but now she's found. And with that, Jesus ends the parable. Jesus ends the parable because we decide the ending. In Luke chapter 15, prior to the parable of the prodigal son or forgiving father, there are Pharisees, as I read at the beginning, uh, criticizing Jesus because he's hanging out with the low lowlifes and outcasts of their society, tax collectors and prostitutes. In response to their sneers and jeers, Jesus tells several parables, including the prodigal son, 
to show the Pharisees that God, represented by the forgiving Father, is loving, compassionate, and extravagant in forgiveness. As I said earlier, the parable is really about how loving and forgiving the Father is toward the wayward son, or daughter in this case, that we just showed you, who represents the repentant tax collectors and prostitutes. And the older son, or daughter, represents the Pharisees, the judgmental, snobbish Pharisees refuse to join the party that Jesus is having with the former tax collectors and prostitutes. So the original audience for this parable were the judgmental, snobbish Pharisees who looked down on sinners even if they were repentant sinners. But the parable has been a lesson for people down through the ages and even today because there have always been judgmental and snobbish people who look down on others. And even if the people they look down on repent of their sinful ways, they still condemn them, probably, because they need to feel superior to someone more than anything else, so that they can feel good about themselves. And that may be the first lesson for those who are judgmental and condemning of other people, and they need to repent as well as the people they look down on and condemn. So that leaves the Pharisees of Jesus' day and whoever are the judgmental and condemning people of today as the indignant, self-righteous, older son in the parable. Jesus is leaving the ending up to us as to how we will respond to God's call to join God's party. Will we forgive? and accept people who have sinned, perhaps even sinned against us, and join God's celebration of a prodigal come home? Or will we be like the older son, refusing to join the celebration because we demand our own kind of judgment, a judgment according to our rules? Why did the older brother feel offended? Who did the prodigal son injure and offend? His older brother? No. The spendthrift son insulted and offended his father, not his brother. But as the tax collectors and prostitutes did not personally of offend the Pharisees, their offenses was against God because they violated God's commands. But the Pharisees, like other judgmental and condemning people, believe themselves to be the representatives of God and they pass judgment in God's place. As the words of our introit said, we do not understand anything that doesn't fit into our scheme or plan. But we have made the rules, and we must share the blame, because it's we who say who's an outsider and who gives them names and labels. I used to think that uh, we are more forgiving of ourselves than we are of other people's faults and mistakes. But now I think that we're just better at ignoring our own faults and mistakes than those of others. I think that we are oftentimes less forgiving of ourselves. We just do a better job of overlooking all those things and pretending they don't exist. We shove our awareness of our own faults and flaws into some dark recess in our minds. And that is why Jesus has to remind us that we should take the log out of our own eye before we take the speck out of someone else's. But when we are aware of our own faults and flaws, then we are more forgiving of other people's faults and flaws. Seeing ourselves for who we really are is a difficult thing to do, and most often it takes a lot of courage. It took uh, the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter hitting bottom, being broke, hungry, and tending pigs for her to realize who she really was a sinner who did not deserve to be a loving and generous man's son or daughter. But the thing that should give us strength and courage to forgive ourselves is the knowledge that God is more ready to forgive than we are even to ask for forgiveness. That is how God treats us all. We will be forgiven if we just come back and show God that we want to be with God. We should be encouraged to forgive ourselves if we know that God will forgive us before we even ask. 
So in the words of the anthem today, don't keep carrying around all that anger because it will eat you up inside. Most of the time for us to find peace and acceptance for ourselves, we need to practice the heart of the matter and forgive. Practice forgiveness of others and ourselves. Amen.